In this video, we're going to be looking at a solid formed by two by adjoining two hemispheres to the ends of a right circular cylinder. Uh, if the total volume of the solid is 12 cubic centimeters, find the radius of the cylinder that yields a minimum surface area. And so we're really looking at kind of at a pill or an old capsule, if, if there are those out there old enough to remember those. <laughs> we're going to take a hemisphere, pop that on there, pop a hemisphere on here, and when we do, we get a radius here and a radius of the cylinder here. We also have a length of the cylinder, which I'm going to call the height. And now if we take a look at the surface area, the surface area of this would equal the surface area of one sphere, which is 4 pi r squared, plus the surface area of the cylinder itself, which is 2 pi r, which is the width if you were to unroll the cylinder as a, as a um, a rectangle and so it'd be the circumference of the cylinder times the height of it okay so now we do have a volume measurement so let's go ahead and calculate the volume of this and that might give us uh, something to work for in our surface area because right now we got two variables and we can only use one and so 12 is equal to the volume well the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed plus the volume of the cylinder would be pi r squared h. Well, given that, we have uh, 9. So we'd have, uh, see if, whoop, I'm sorry, that's not right here. I'm jumping ahead of myself. And so now I've got 12 minus 4 thirds pi r cubed is equal to pi r squared h. If we divide both sides by pi r squared, then it gives us 12 over pi r squared minus, and this is going to give us 4 thirds r is equal to h. Now we can just substitute that in for h and proceed. So our surface area then is equal to 4 pi r uh, squared plus 2 pi r times 12 over pi r squared minus 4 thirds r. Now distributing that 2 pi r, surface area is equal to 4 pi r squared plus, and now pi's and an r downstairs cancel, so that gives us 24 over r minus, and now this is going to give us 8 thirds pi r squared. We can go ahead and combine these two terms. And now I've got 12 thirds here minus 8 thirds give me 4 thirds. So surface area is equal to 4 thirds pi r squared plus 24 over r. Now when we go ahead and take the derivative of this, uh, the derivative of the surface area with respect to r is equal to 8 thirds pi r plus, uh, this would become a negative 24 over r squared. Set that equal to zero. You get zero is equal to 8 thirds pi r uh, and minus 24 over r squared. Multiply both sides by r squared to clear out the fraction or multiply actually by 3 r squared. And you come up with 0 is equal to, and this is going to give you 8 pi r cubed minus 72, and the r squareds cancel. And so when we do this, we get uh, 72 divided by 8, which is 9, over pi is equal to uh, r cubed, which implies that r is equal to the cube root of 9 over pi. Now, is this in fact uh, a minimum? Because that's what we're looking for and up to this point a lot of what we've dealt with is maximums if you've been watching my videos. And so we want to check to see if, if, if the surface area is actually a minimum. 
And so what we can do then is we can simply take the derivative of the surface or of the derivative of the surface area, so the second derivative. And I'm going to go ahead and do that from here. And so when we do that, we get uh, d2 sa or dr squared is equal to, and this is going to be 24 pi r squared. Now, if you stick uh, this value in for r, you're going to get a positive times a positive is times a positive is a positive, and so that's greater than zero. And so since it's greater than zero, it's concave up, which means what you're looking at is a minimum. And so this is the value of r. So r is equal to the cube root of 9 over pi. The end.